Girl Scope. How's everybody? It's Tuesday. Oh man, come talk to me. I gotta go in a second. How's everybody doing? You guys are having a blessed day, wonderful day. On today, our people of God, it's good to see you. Come on into the room. Fight some people. Not gonna be long. Hope you guys are having a beautiful day. Hey guys, as you're coming, hey, hey Bishop Allen, how you doing? Uh, I I hope you guys are having a great day. Listen, uh, I'm going to be in Delaware. I'm saying this early um, for three, four days, and we're going to do a ladies' night out in Delaware. So you got to go to Eventbrite. If you're in the Philly area, New York area, um, all those areas, Delaware, I'm going to be in your area. you got to go to um, ladiesnightoutde.eventbrite.com. So www.ladiesnightout. Ladies Night, I'm sorry. Um, ladies Night Out, D-E dot Eventbrite dot com. Hello, my friend. It's, hey, Mr. G.G. Ladies Night Out. L-A-D-I-E-S. Night Out. D-E, as in Delaware. Dot Eventbrite dot com. Register. You'll we'll be glad you did. Um, anybody on here from the Philly area, Philly, New York, uh, you got to get your t-shirts and your bags and stuff so you can be looking all cute and stuff for the event um philly new york delaware anybody from those areas do me a favor type of one if you are from those areas the rest of y'all hit that share button let's get it on and popping but i want you to register if you hadn't followed me follow me now and all that good stuff if you're from philly anybody from philly De philly delaware type of one if you are i want to say hi just let you know I'm going to be in your area, so I want you guys to register. South Jersey, South Jersey, thank you. Help me now. Help me, Dr. Dana. South Jersey. I think the area is within an hour, two-hour radius of everybody, so plenty of people should be able to come, but I want you guys to go register at Eventbrite for our ladies' night out. Philly, well, Miss Beauty, I need you to come. I'm going to be in your area now. Register and get your little cute T-shirt and all that stuff. Delaware Valley area. Dr. Dana, Delaware Valley is what she said. She said it. Virginia, wherever y'all at, I need y'all to register and show up. You're going to have a ladies' night out with me. Pastor D, you're going to be glad you came. I'm going to have something splendiferous for you. Go look it up. I guess it's a word. New York. Yes, New York. In that area. Ladies' night out, D-E, Delaware, dot eventbrite.com. I'm Pastor D, Senior Pastor Union Worship Center. Thank you guys. I've been all over the place. I'm tired. But we're moving on next month. We're going to be uh, at the FOCFI Convocation in New Orleans, Louisiana. I will preach the closing night. Um, I will preach the closing night of the convocation. So I want you guys to come if you are in the, in, in the New Orleans area. Um, I'll preach that closing night of the convocation on next month. So come and see me, brother from another mother. I will be there in New Orleans, Louisiana with Bishop R.C. Blakes. Um, Delaware Valley Remind me Dr. Dana to say that So I want you guys to come Everybody else Need you to register at Eventbrite If you're ready Type ready You gotta get it out there Greetings my friend Listen um, I got something <coughs> Real quick And I want to talk about this quickly uh, New Orleans Yeah come see me in New Orleans You're gonna be glad you did I gotta speak Be the keynote speaker that night it's going to be blessed. I'm going to have something up my sleeve, so just come come hear me. I promise you'll be glad you did. Uh, one of the things I'm talking about quickly on today, succinctly, is that you need to know who your enemy is. Some of you are fighting the wrong enemy. Churches in general, people in general, Christians in general, one of the biggest things that we do, we fight each other. We should be on the same team, and we're not really fighting the enemy. We should be against the enemy. It's crazy that the enemy, watch this, people, God, demons and devils, don't separate they have one mission and one goal and they stay together but it's always the church that always separates let me say it this way church kills its wounded but one of the things i always say is this it's a shame it's a shame there's more loyalty in the streets than in the house of god crazy right they'll go out and shoot somebody in the street somebody will bear witness to it and they see it and they'll go to court and they won't even testify Hey, Mr. Trees, isn't that crazy? They'll go to court, and they won't even talk and sell on each other. But you get in church, and church celebrates its wounded, 
Church celebrates when somebody downfalls. Church people, and, and I'm saying that under the mantra, I'm not Christians, but real church folks, they just, when somebody, you know, has an issue, we talk about each other. Yeah, gossip about each other. We do every bit of this. It's a shame. And the enemy is laughing at us because we have philosophical differences when it comes to the word of God. Uh, we have antiquated differences as well because some of the differences are more religious than it is biblical. All right. And some of these things that we teach and some of the things that we do in our churches are just religion, has nothing to do with God. And we are fighting each other. We won't speak to that church across the street. We won't speak to them because they are not our denomination, delegation, aggregation. They are, uh, have nothing to do with them. It's crazy, people of God, that the enemy's laughing at us because we are not on the same team. And so now, when you understand the tricks of the enemy, one of the en things the enemy does... My series at my church is The Devil Comes to Church. The devil comes to church through gossip. He comes to church through people. He comes to church because he wants, understandably, he wants you to say something against the church. There's one word that you can say that can tear a church down. They can tear a pastor down. They can tear the members down. Some of you are amazed because you got to church and you thought everybody was saved. You thought everybody was worshiping God. You had no idea that when you went to dinner with them, they were going to be talking about everybody in the church. You had no idea they were going to be talking about your pastor. You had no idea they were going to be talking about the praise team. It's a crazy thing. They have so much criticism, but if you hand them the mic, they couldn't do the same thing themselves. It's a crazy thing. This is what you deal with when it comes to church. He comes through people. He comes through pastors that have a platform, but they are not manipulative in their approach. And the thing about this is, people of God, um, the thing about the pastors that are manipulating, you thought that because they had a gift, they had the anointing. One of the things that we do as believers of God is we mistake charisma, hey, my friend, as anointing. Man, did y'all get that? We mistake charisma as anointing. I can tell you this. I can say enough catchphrases and enough high-five your neighbors, and I can holler enough, and you'll feel something. You'll run around. You'll jump, and you'll shout if I say enough words. Because sometimes we are so in emotionalism. And because of the emotionalism, we think it's a move of God. A lot of times, some of the tears that we shed in church are emotionalism because of things we've done, and we're guilty. I'm going to ask you a simple question. How many of you have been to the place in your life where you went to church and you cried, not because the Spirit of God was moving, you cried because of what you did wrong? I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait. I will wait. That's what we do. And so we think because they have a couple of catchphrases, you know, a couple of this or that, we think it's the Spirit of God. That's not how it works. I'm talking about now how to understand to really know your enemy and the way you know your enemy is this. I got a scripture here, Mark 5 and 6 through 8. I'm going to bless five of you and I'm going to get over here. This is a series that I'm doing at my church. I was going back through some things on today. Mark 5, 6 through 8. Check this out. It says, when he saw Jesus from a distance, he ran and fell on his knees. He shouted at the top of his voice, what do you want with me, Jesus, son of the most high? The word says, when he saw Jesus from a distance, he ran. Watch this. He ran. He said, what do you want from me, Jesus, son of the most high? Check this out. Here in this particular text, now you see a man that's possessed with the devil. And here it is. You would think that now he would come to Jesus and he would hate Jesus. But he comes to Jesus. Watch this, people of God. And he addresses him in his deity. Because in, understandably, you got to know that the devil is monotheistic. He understands there is one true and living God. So when he addresses Jesus, he always has to address him in his deity. He hates Christ. But check this out. He comes up to him and the word says, here it is, the man recognized who Jesus was. I brought out a critical point. I had no notes about this Sunday and God was dealing with me while I was speaking. Hey, by the way, hey, my friend, check this out. The word says he comes up to Jesus with a loud voice. He yells and he screams to Jesus with a loud voice. Critically, if you were doing homiletical preaching and expository preaching 101, that should stand out as a sore thumb if you're trying to address the audience, preachers, teachers, everybody. When you are in front of people, you need to know your audience and how to reach your audience. Sometimes the things that you say about Job with six so long, flesh fell from his bones, boo, that was 1975. You got to wake up. 
I got to be relevant to now the times. It's simple. It just spoke to you. You should have brought a point out about this. It says when he saw Jesus, he came to him in a loud voice. One of the critical points that you can bring out of this text, because it's speaking to you right now, that when the enemy comes, the enemy does not come quiet. There it is. Ooh, there it is. See, when the enemy comes at your life, he doesn't come quiet. He doesn't come silent. He makes noise. He wants everybody to know his presence. He wants everybody to know he's there. He wants everybody to know he's trying to wreck your life. You want me to prove it to you? When, uh, when things go awry in your life, the enemy is not quiet. He wants to destroy you. His sole objective and his purpose is to kill, steal, and destroy. He comes with a loud voice and he yells, people of God. He says, what do you want with me, Jesus? Now, to make it relevant to 2017, he comes with a loud voice. And now you can now uh, put it in the posture when it comes to people. When the enemy comes through people, they come loud. They make a lot of noise. They make a lot of noise about your life. They don't come quietly. They don't come silently. They come, all right? They come loud. You've ever had people that walk into your life and they came and they made an interest and they made an arrival and they made it known that they were there. They were trying to be there. They were going to make sure that you knew they were there. They were going to make sure that when you went to certain places that you knew they were with you. They were trying to announce an arrival. They were loud. You are around some people because a lot of times you need to understand this is how the devil is. You ever been to a basketball game? It's amazing. Watch this, people of God, that the people in the cheapest seats make the loudest noise. What? Yeah. The devil is sitting in the cheapest seats. But he makes the loudest noise. Why? Because that's his job, people of God. The people on court side and front row seats, here's the shout. You hardly see them saying anything because they're used to being there. But the devil now has tried to occupy space that he really can't inhabit. And that's why he comes to try to announce his rival. He says, check this out. What do you want with me, Jesus? What do you want? And now he says, what do you want? Because he understands that now every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess. He knows who Jesus is. Secondly, check this out. And I wrote a point down. Is this. Okay? So he recognized who Jesus is. He comes with a loud voice. Number two. All right? Thirdly, check this out. The devil knows that his days are numbered. I was reading the Revelation 12 and 12 on Sunday. And I was telling people the devil understands that his days are numbered. That's why he comes at you so fast and tries to wreak havoc and wreak havoc on your life. Because his days are numbered. See, when the devil reminds you of your past, you always remind him of his future. Is that good, Periscope? When the devil reminds you of what he's doing, always remind him of where he is and where he's going. He will never go to anywhere but hell, people of God. So he works as fast as he can to come against you and try to come and wreak havoc against your life. He tries to stop you. He tries to thwart your destiny. Comes against your children. Come against your family. Come against, and that's what he wants to do because that's his job. If we would get back on our job, my people, which are called by my name, if we would really get back to praying. I told my people on Sunday, the thing about prayer warriors, the thing about people that are intercessors is this now. They don't just start praying when things go awry in their life. They stay in a posture of prayer because they know it's a calm before the storm. See, if everything is quiet in your life right now, then you can expect something to happen. So now, you don't just start praying when things happen. You already got a prayer just in case something happened. Prayer should be like a camel's, uh, 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 the humpback of a camel. And now, a humpback of a camel does this. It's a reservoir of water. So when it goes in a dry place and there is no water, it can pour from the storage from within and pour water even if there's nothing to drink. When you understand what prayer is in your life, you have something stored up for a dry, rainy season. Okay? Well, dry season, not rainy. A dry season in your life where well, you got a prayer for that. You got a praise stored up for that. You got something on the inside of you stored up for that. So when stuff goes wrong in your life, you're expecting it because you're already in the mode of prayer. And too many Christians and anemic Christians and cookie cutter Christians, they don't start praying to stuff go wrong. Are y'all catching me today? And now when things go wrong, you start to pray. God, jump through hoops to fix this. God, go through hoops to do this. God, go do this. Go do that. Go do that. And God said, you should have been praying. And if you were discerning enough, you would expect it to come. And when I send it to you, you need to understand, I will never put more on you than you can bear. So you would see, if you got a prayer for that, I know a lot of people are guilty of that. If you have a prayer already stored up on the inside and a praise on the inside, see, 
people that are consistent believers and consistent Christians in prayers, you can't tell when they're going through. Are y'all catching me today? Please tell me, y'all. You don't know when they're going through because they look the same every time you see them. You don't know if they're sick. You don't know if they're going through something at home. You don't know if they're broke. You don't know if they lost a job. They are the same every time. They don't wear their feelings on their face or on their sleeve. They're not coming with attitudes and arrogance and, and frustrated because they people of God, are y'all hearing this? They are now those uh, consistent praisers and those consistent. But see, when you understand the attacks of the devil, watch this. Nothing frustrates the devil more than a wounded worshiper. Y'all throw your wig, go get it. Somebody should have shouted right there. I, I know y'all trying to be quiet today because y'all real cute and all this stuff. But let me talk to the real people real quick and I got to roll. Nothing frustrates the devil more than a wounded worshiper. Are y'all catching me? A wounded worshiper. When you wound it, but you still praise God. When you frustrate it, but you still praise God. When you feel like going back to the BCU and cussing everybody out, they mama, lottie, daddy, and everybody, but you hold your peace and let God come on. Periscope and let God fight your back. A wounded worshiper. When they leave you, neglect you, they walk out of your life, leave you nothing. I'm, I'm talking about you on the bare minimums. You're trying to scrape pennies together to take care of your family and your children. Nothing frustrates the enemy. When you are wounded, he's thrown everything at you and you still here. Oh, come on, y'all. He throws everything at you and you refuse to give up. Are y'all catching me today? He throws everything at you and you refuse to go throw in a towel. You refuse to go settle back for what used to happen. You refuse, good evening, my friend, to go back and ask anybody for money because you refuse to go sell yourself short. Are y'all catching this, Doc? All right. You have to understand you are wounded worshipers on here today. And that's what you understand when you are now in touch with your imperfection and in your feelings, people of God, and you are in touch with who you are. What you understand is that you always need God. So the enemy, number two, he understands that his days are numbered. When the devil knows that his days are numbered, his job is to try to take you out as soon as he can. And you sit up here crying and saying, Lord, I, I, I don't know what to do. And Lord, I can't figure it out. And the devil's laughing at you because you got God on your side. Here go your shout for the day. The devil has some power, but he does not have all power. Come on, Periscope. I wish I would get that in your spirit. He has some power, but he doesn't have all the power. Here it is, people of God. You got to understand. Watch this, guys. Here go to shout. When you understand the word of God, it'll tell you that there are some demons that are already chained up waiting to be judged. And there are some devils, people of God, maybe here, 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 let me say it this way. I told my church this Sunday, I don't know if they was catching it. I think they were being cute, but they finally got it at the end. There are some devils that are already chained up that are ready to be judged. Watch this. Maybe if you really look at this, what I just said, you ever wonder why some of the things that hit some of your family never hit you? Hmm. Maybe. Maybe. And I'm saying this in rhetoric because I, I, I know the answer. It's not really a maybe, but I'm just saying. You ever thought about this, though? Just maybe. Um, God had already chained up some of the devils to your past, to generational curses. You ever wonder why some of the curses skip your bloodline and some of the sickness skip your bloodline? And some of the generational curses skip your children. And some of the things that your parents and your grandparents suffer from, you have not suffered from, nor will you suffer from. Because God will get to a point in your life where he will take what the enemy does to you personal. Somebody type that in the comments. Say, personal. I'm here today prophetically to say to a hundred of you that's paying attention, what you're going through. God is taking it personal. He has your name on his lips. He has your name on his heart. He has taken this personal. That's why some things that killed your uncle and your auntie and your father will now kill you because he's chained up the devil that's trying to bind you up. God's removing the handcuffs to your past and he's now releasing you to your future. And what he will do, he will literally throw the keys away to your past and understandably walk you to a bright future. That's the problem with some of you on today. You need to understand that all the power belongs to God. It does not belong to him. The devil cannot do anything unless God allows it. Are y'all catching this today? And so now what happens is this now. Here's the shout of the text now. The devil runs up. Watch this, guys. He runs up, okay, to Jesus. 
he run, the word says the first thing that he does is worship. I just want to do this one point today because it's my favorite point. He worships Jesus. The devil, y'all catching this? The devil runs up and the first thing he does is worships Jesus. Here go your shout, people of God. All right? If you were relevant to 2017, you can make this out to be relationships now. Preachers, I'm just helping you, homolytical 101. And I will tell you that the devil does not like Jesus, does not love Jesus. But the word said, watch this, guys. He walks up to Jesus and he gets on his knees and he worships and he bows to Jesus. Here's the shout of the day. It is possible to worship someone without loving them. I got to go, Periscope, because y'all just missed that. It went over your head. I'm going to say it one more time. It is possible. Are y'all hearing that? It's possible to worship somebody and not love them. Wow. I'm done. I just want to do that one point. I set y'all up for the okie dokie. Preachers, you can have it for free. Just give me a credit. You know, just cite me when you go. I'm going to say it again. You ever been in a relationship and this boy was so stupid and crazy for you, but they may have really worshipped you, but they really didn't love you? Sometimes they worship the stuff that you do for them and the stuff that you can do for them. See, the thing about it, people of God, is this. Sometimes now, people will come under false pretenses because they know what you can do for them. So they'll worship the things that you can do, but they really don't love you. Y'all quiet, but I'm telling the truth now. So he now worships him without loving him because the demons worship Jesus. Watch this, y'all. Not because they loved him. They worship him because of who he is. They know he is God and they know his authority. Some people come around around you because they know the authority and the power that you have so they'll worship you because they're trying to get to the source of your strength man 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 yeah it's more of revelation but it's more of just simple context clues are you hearing me he worships him but he doesn't love him and I'm going to tell y'all something. We're living in a time where people will worship you. Watch this, ladies. And they will worship you, but they don't love God. Anytime a man walks into your life and he worships you, but he does not love God. And he worships you so much, but he won't go to church with you. Oh, y'all quiet. Come on, stay with me. He worships you so much, but he doesn't even read the word with you. He worships you so much, but watch this. He doesn't pray with you. He worships you so much, but you never talk about God. But all you talk about is your body, my friend. He worships you so much. And all he talk about how cute you are and how pretty your lips and your hips and your fingertips. He worships you. Are you hearing me? But he never has a relationship with God. Then he does not respect the God in you. He has made you out to be his God. And what he'll do is take on the Messiah complex one more time and he'll want you to now worship him because he'll take on the spirit of the adversary because now he does not want you to worship God. Y'all better hear me, ladies, on today. Men that come into your life, same thing, women, all right? Women, okay? Women, men that come into your life, men, women that come into your life and they worship you but they don't love God. Houston, we have a problem. Are y'all hearing me today? You got a problem that he'll talk you out of going to church on Sunday and you had a relationship with God. You, you, you have a problem that he'll talk you out of going to midweek teaching and he'll talk you out of getting on the conference call for the prayer line that you used to do every day. He, he, you have a problem where he'll talk you out of listening to the word on Periscope and social media. You, uh, you have a problem with all he wants to do is go clubbing with you and partying with you and meet you back at the house and y'all drink and y'all get toe up to the flow up. No, people of God, you, that's a problem. When they will worship you to that avail and they'll put you on that pedestal, but they have no relationship with God. So you will now think he loves you so much and you will lose your identity and your relationship with God because of the worship he gives you. You are convoluted in your spirit. Okay? You are sad. I promise you. Don't you ever allow anybody to come into your life. And now you'll put God on the back burn. See, this is what God does in our life. And we don't like it sometimes. The reason God does not give some of you relationships and give you the man you want, the house you want, or give you some of these things that you desire and you want to acquire is because of this. He knows that if he gives it to you, you'll lose your relationship and your identity to him. And so what you'll start to do, you'll start to put God on a one night stand basis. Wow. And what you'll do, you'll start to be to the place in your life where you only serve God and you only call on him when when you need him so what you'll do you'll go and you'll look all beautiful for this man but you won't even adorn yourself with the beauty of holiness talk pastor d well somebody play the organ i'm ready to preach now
Did y'all hear that? Come on now. That's just the truth. And I'm telling you, I see your eyes, yeah. <laughs> and that's what we do. And so it's possible. And we in A flat, we're ready to preach now. Are y'all hearing this? It's possible, okay? Because now, watch this, guys. You need to understand that what happens is this. Here it is. We are at the place where now people are worshiping science and they are worshiping materialism and they are worshiping money and everything under the sun. You worship your new car and God bless you with it, but you worship, oh, you got to clean it and wash it on Sunday. You worship more, more of you on here and, and everybody across this country. You worship your bed. You want to sleep. It's amazing. You only get tired when it's time to go to church. Oh, that is the trick of the devil. I'm telling you, people of God, don't be fooled by the enemy. Don't fall prey to the enemy. You'll show up at everything you want to show up at. You'll put your money into $200, $300 bundles. Yes, you will, but you won't even tie it on Sunday. Can't nobody get you to put $25 in church and you have a fit if the preacher asks for it, but you will put your money on everything that you want to do because you are worshiping what you want to worship. Let me tell you something. At the end of the day, you, you need to understand every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess who Jesus is, guys. And we got to get that. Sometimes you think now this preaching is out of, out of style and some of the stuff I say is real relevant it is very profound but sometimes we got to get back to remind you that you got to worship God and you got to love God and you cannot put God on weekend visitations you got to serve him every day sometimes you don't crack your Bible open until you get to church and a preacher call out a scripture those are tricks of the enemy Okay, you got to know the word up front for yourself. You can't keep walking around and talking about it is written. It's somewhere in the Bible. No, you need to know the word for yourself. I, I've done insurance and in insurance, when I would get calls on the phone, I never had time to go look up the policies because I needed to know it by heart. So when they asked me, was it payable or was it excluded or was it covered? I could immediately answer the question because I had already memorized and studied the policy. The word have you hid in your heart, David said, so you cannot sin against him. But the problem is this. You are not creating enough vacancy for God to inhabit you. You are now convoluted with a lot of other things, but we are not vacant enough for God to come into our heart. Right? <coughs> Don't be so busy. I love y'all. Don't be so busy. Were you trying to pursue a man and chase a man, but you don't ever pursue and chase after God's heart, right? Don't be so busy where you want a, a, a pretty woman, but you never go out and you pursue God. Don't be so busy where you want your business to be so flourishing, but you never flourish in the word of God. I'm saying it on today, people of God. You got to be at this place because the devil, people of God, here it is now, wants you to worship him. Okay, so he comes to Christ. He runs fast. He makes a loud noise. He worships Jesus Christ, but he doesn't love him. Ask yourself a critical question today. Are they worshiping me or do they love Christ? You will literally separate yourself from probably 90% of the relationships you have. Because people that are around you that cannot love Christ should not be in your space. It's that simple. I have ladies ask me all the time. They say, Pastor D, I got a boyfriend. Okay. And? Does he love God? I don't know. Don't come talk to me. I'm done with you. Are y'all hearing me? <laughs> no, 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 no. This conversation is over. All right? And what I mean by that, if you don't know if he loves God, I don't know, Pastor D. The problem is this, people of God, you got to know them that labors among you as well. You got to know them that are around you. You got to know the relationship that they have. You have to be at that place, hey, Tina Renee. You have to be at that place, people of God, where you cannot be fooled. Some of you are too old to fall prey to the enemy. Are y'all hearing me today? I don't turn that whole scope to a relationship scope. I wasn't trying to, but it's simple. It's in the text. He worshiped him. He runs up to him and he calls him Lord. Let me say it this way. Watch this now. So the devil now, he addresses him in his deity. Now Jesus got to pay attention because now everybody around and what he does, people are like, here's the shout now. The enemy comes and if you research the historicity of what I'm talking about, he came and he shouted in a crowd. Well, well, well. All right. Anyway, he shouted. Anyway. In a crowd. He made Noah's in a crowd because he wanted to make his presence known. See, there are people that will come up un unto you in false pretenses and in front of everybody, they will act like your relationship cool. Whoa, y'all missed it. I know it went over your head. Let me say it one more time. They'll come under false pretense in front of everybody. They'll try to make sure land, make sure everybody or it appears before everybody. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? That everything is right. 
that everything is is perfect. So they'll walk up to you and they'll come talk to you and they and you know they've been talking behind your back. And everybody looking like, oh, they cool now? Wait a minute, when we got cool? Anybody ever done y'all like this? I know they've done me like this. I said, why are they talking to me now? Because it's a crowd. Are y'all hearing that? So he wants the crowd to appear like they're on the same page and everybody's on one accord because it's a crowd. People will love to come up from in front of you, in front of crowds, because what they do, people of God, uh, they, 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 they talk to you and they talk about you, number one, but they'll talk to you as well. See, the problem with some of you is this. You think because they don't like your posting, you think because they don't share your posting, they, they're not liking your pictures. Boo, let me tell y'all something. Just because they like it don't mean they're not watching. Oh, yes, just because they're not sharing don't mean they're not paying attention. Just because they don't, you know, come in on it don't mean they don't think you're successful. That's not your purpose and that's not what you need to be after. You keep on being successful at what you do. And I promise you, God will literally make some of your enemies come back to apologize. But it's not what I'm saying. They'll come in front of a crowd. They'll make it look cool. They'll make your family think y'all got back together. They'll make everybody think. They'll make your, your new boyfriend be upset because they'll walk in front of your new boyfriend and kiss you on the cheek and say something stupid to you and you crazy enough to chuckle and laugh and you don't understand the devices of the enemy trying to divide you from the new people in your life. I'm telling you what the devil will do. Done it to me a hundred times. Okay? Preachers that talked about me walked in my face, and I know all they crew knew they talked about me. But see, the problem is this. Here's your shout. People will post subliminal message. They'll send out subliminal messages. You know they talking about you. You know it got back to you. But here go your shout. Throw your wig and catch it. They get incensed. Watch the shout. Because you know about it, and you didn't respond to it. Man. <laughs> the story of my life. Are y'all hearing what I just said? They get more upset. Because you were quiet and you said nothing about it. Are y'all hearing that? I'm talking about you didn't say anything and they got infuri infuriated and they got incensed and indignant. Okay, indignant. And they got upset because of the fact that you didn't respond and they know you know. Wow. See, when you are quiet, sometimes, here it is, minor people are not worthy of a major response. Irrelevant people are not worthy of a major response. They use your name and keep your name on their lips because their names give them credence and it gives them relevance. People's ears do not even perk up unless they say your name is attached to it. That's why you can't be frustrated because they're giving you free press and free publicity and free marketing. All the time they talk about you, good and bad, is giving you free press, whether it's true or not. Are y'all hearing this today? So the enemy comes. He comes loud. And he comes in a crowd and he comes and he brings down, here it is, all this stuff with him. And he says to the devil, what do, to God, what do you want with me? Right? It's crazy now that the anointing of God, watch this, will draw devils to you. Watch this. It will draw devils to you without you even asking. Jesus showed up and the devil announced himself. If you are professing to be a believer and you got the power that you say you have, what's going to happen in your life, you're going to now walk in places and devil's going to show up because of the power in you. Grandma said it this way. If you're not bumping into the devil every now and then, then maybe you're on his side. Are y'all hearing this? The devil shows up and says, Jesus, what do you want? Jesus said nothing. You got to have enough power. That now, when you show up, devils announce themselves. Wow. When you show up and people asking you for your number and they're trying to get with you, you understand because you got the power if the devil's speaking. See, when it comes out of their mouth, you shouldn't be so flattered. Watch this and enamored because this is what the devil does. And I'm done. He addresses him by his deity. Y'all see me close the thing? He addresses him by his deity. The devil comes with flattering words he says jesus you are the christ jesus son of david jesus holy one he addresses him these ladies sometimes you get it twisted and you think because they can say the right thing they have the right motives mm -hmm. 
Okay. Go to Sambalat, Tobal, and Jeshem and go look in Nehemiah 2, 3, 4, and you'll understand that Jeshem, Tobal, and Sambalat, Tobal, and Jeshem uh, were three people, and they were together, the crowd together. They came against Nehemiah, but go look at the re the word of Tobiah and Jeshem, people of God. You'll understand that one of their names means the Lord is good. Check this out. He had the right name, the right definition of his name meant the Lord is good, okay? But he was going against God's one, a chosen one at the time, to rebuild the wall. Problem with some of you that you don't understand, that there are a lot of people that can say the right words, they got the right name. They be around the right people or they are around the right people. But the problem is this. They can have the right name and have the wrong nature. Okay? So y'all need to wake up. There are a lot of people, they have the right name, but they got the wrong nature. They know what to say, know how to make you feel good about yourself. Know how make, they will make you think you ought to snap, crackle, and pop, but they have the wrong intentions and the wrong nature understand that and when you get that in your spirit you will see these people for really who they are okay periscope i'm out of time i got a road but i'm not out of work thank y'all for jumping on i wasn't gonna stay on that long uh, but y'all gotta hear this y'all gotta hear what i'm saying i'm telling you they are sent on assignment they will tell you everything that you like to hear and i promise you the devil i promise you the devil can pick up some nuances and just by you showing up you can look a certain way and he'll know your favorite color is pink. He'll know your favorite color is blue. He'll know you like daffodils. Y'all crazy. I don't know why y'all like daffodils. Get a better flower than that. He'll know you like roses. He'll know you like long stem roses. He'll know you like cherry on top of a sundae. He'll know you greedy, so he'll buy you pizza. <laughs> hey, Angela Factor. I'm telling you, that's what he'll do. He'll know you like rhinestones, so he'll buy your watch with rhinestones in it. I'm telling you, the devil do everything. I'm talking about he know you like salt and pepper on your food, and you had not even tasted it. He saw you do it the first time, so you'd be like, oh, my God, how did he know that I like salt and pepper? Boo, you did it at the table. The devil studies. Man, will you hear me, ladies and gentlemen? He studies. He, a real man that, 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 listen, okay, devil or not, let's just go here, and I got to go. Devil or not, a real man that wants you, he studies you. Can I talk to the ladies? Brothers, y'all help me. You know what I'm saying? He studies you. Are y'all hearing me? He studies you. He watches. That's what you need to understand. They'll watch you from afar. How you do your little hair? How you twist your little hair? And Oh, her hair, her hair was green, so he know every third day you change it to another color. <laughs> it was red today, so it, it was green three days later. And then it turned fuchsia, and it turned turquoise, and it turned this way. They watch you. That's their job. I'm telling you, all right? A man that wants you should study you. So when he comes and he approaches you, he should now approach you under the right pretense because he's watched you from before. I, I'm very careful and cautious of telling a lady to immediately just go out with a dude when they just walk up to them and ask them for their number. No, get to know them first and they should get to know some things about you. Here's your shout, ladies, without you saying nothing. Oh, you get to the date and you get there at the table and you tell him how many people hurt you and how many people didn't want you and how your ex was. And he looking upside your head now. He had to come in. He think I got to save this woman. And now he'll come trying to be a knight in shining armor and he'll do everything you like to get you because now you told him too much. They need to get to know you for themselves. Some things should be acquired. Some things should be found out. Some things they shouldn't learn until they marry you. Whoa. Yes. OK. That's why. You can't live with them before you marry them. You're not leaving nothing for the imagination. Ladies, talk to me. That's why you can't wear everything around them and show them everything that you have in your assets because you're leaving nothing to the imagination. It's bad enough they look at you already. L listen, save something. Don't give it all out there. and Don't throw it all out there on the table. Y'all hear me today. I'm telling you. I'm telling you, the devil, it's already bad enough. Let's be very transparent and honest with you on here today. It's hard enough for y'all to stay uh, uh, celibate as it is. Don't put yourself in a predicament. Well, y'all hear me? Are y'all hear me? It's hard enough. The church don't tell y'all this. He will keep you if you want. Yeah, he will keep you. But there are times in your life where you override the spirit of God. You don't want to be kept. So why the church don't never tell you about them moments? Lord, I'm about to do this. You better come now. Lord, if I ooh, answer that text message, see, that's what we don't talk about enough. That's the issue now. He'll make a way to escape from the temptation. And now 
Let's say it one more time. I ain't said this in a long time. It is not temptation when you are doing the invitation. Talk, Pastor D. I got to go. Somebody please type that in the comments. It is not temptation when you are doing the invitation. You know why? You want me to prove it to you? There's no way. You already set it up like a spiritual Rolodex in your mind. What you going to do when he get there? Brothers, you don't set it up like you already know what you what you going to do to her when you get there or when she come to your house. Because you sent her a text and say, it's little old nuck nuck sleep. Little old bad nuck nuck is knocked out sleep. And she done went in the kitchen trying to cook. And she knows she can't cook. She just trying to impress you. And she already go, oh, see, mm, all right, you're going to go up in there. You're going to get yourself all perfumed up. And you're going to be smelling like Pepperly, 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 what's it, Le Pew, the good guy, whatever. Anyway, you're going to be smelling nice. You, you done got yourself bathed and watered up and got yourself smelling good and shaved and stuff and all that stuff. You've already set yourself up for failure. Is that the truth, y'all? I'm going to go ahead and talk to some of you ladies because some of y'all are real particular. And if you don't shave your body, you ain't doing nothing. So every now and then... Don't say your body because you, that way to keep you safe. I'm Pastor D. I'm out of time. <clears throat> but I'm not out of word. I just told y'all the truth, didn't I? I did. You ain't going to touch me tonight, buddy. Mm hmm. Don't take a bell till you leave. Wear some garlic around your neck. You got to do what you got to do to stay safe. But the number one thing that you got to do, you can't yield to it. And the word says yield to it. See, if you already got it going in your mind, you've already yielded to it. If you answer that message, you've already yielded to it. If you tell them to come over, you already know. Boo, you can't even cook. So you already know what's going to happen. You know Netflix ain't got nothing to watch on there. And that's just the truth. You got to be true to yourself and real with yourself. And say, if I let this man come, if I let this woman come over here, this is not. Listen, be true to yourself. Be honest to yourself. And that's what we're not doing enough in these days. Are y'all hearing me today? To thine own self. I said the other day, Shakespeare, be true. And when you are true to yourself, I, I got a whole series. I was just reading today. I'm going to teach it. I'm going to teach it again. Uh, how to set boundaries in relationships. Okay? If you're trying to hold yourself together, y'all can't be hanging out all the time at night together. You got to let them go home. You got to set boundaries. I'm going to do the whole series again. You got to set boundaries in relationships. I'm sorry, ladies. I'm telling you, you are more than thongs and heels. By the time you start to get around my age, you got to get a little bit more cognizant of the game. And you just got to say, you know what? I've done this when I was 18, 20, 25. I got to get a little more mature and get a little stronger. And I cannot let, allow the devil to make me be prey. All right? And I know church ain't teaching y'all this and other, but I'm teach you about the boundaries and tell you what to do. Number one boundary is this. You got to understand. You got to set them out the gate. You cannot skip the friendship stage. You need to be friends and you cannot just jump to the uh, intimate stage with nobody just because you date him and you thought because he had on a suit and he knew three scriptures you was ready to marry him. You have set yourself up for failure. Okay? Because studies will show you, ladies, I promise you, hear me clearly, that typically when a man sleeps with you, all right, the stats of him marrying you have lowered before he marries you. I promise you that stat. I got to tell you the stat. I, I forget the number, but it's a true stat. Most men that marry, I mean, have sex with you before they marry you, you're done. I'm telling you the truth. Yeah, it defiles the temple, my friend. I promise you. And you wonder why, Pastor D, why none of these relationships worked out? Go and see if you slept with them. Chances are it probably didn't work out. That's just the truth. That's the truth, okay? And then other stats will show you, now you've done everything you wanted to do with them while you were dating them. And then you married them, and it will show you now... There are some instances where it decreases in the intimacy and the sexual activity because there's nothing left to imagine. So you're trying to make up stuff to stay intimacy, intimate with this person, but you dated them for seven years and you did everything that you should have been doing as a married couple. Right? So now you're struggling in your marriage. And now you're enticed because that's how the enemy does. The enemy drops options now because you're used to, you've gotten used to this. That's why you got to keep it spiced up. But there's some things they should know. Girl, I ain't know you was like that. They should know that until you marry them. And then show them something new. I was saving this one for the hun new boo. Are y'all hearing this? It's going to be amazing when you can look at your man, look at your husband, look at your woman, and you can look at them and say, you know what? I know I've, I've been with you for two years, three years. But he's going to be so surprised because I hadn't shown him everything. He shouldn't know all this stuff. Are y'all hearing this? 
I just want to bless y'all today. I'm done. No, the enemy's devices. Hello, highly blessed one. All right. I need y'all to do me a favor. I need y'all to go follow me on Facebook. Pastor D, go look at my videos. Go hit share. I need about 50 of you to go share these things across the board. And so y'all can share them. I was I posted something about my latest night out. And I posted something, a clip. Y'all got to look at it. Is there something literally new to show every day? Miss Lady V2? Yeah. You make up something new, my friend. Google is your friend. All right? Spice it up. Go in there. Buy you something nice. Are you hearing me? Because let me tell you something. This is a very true statement. What you won't do, the enemy will send a woman and a man that will. Stretch marks and you're perfect. I'm telling you the truth. You keep talking about he ugly, he fat. Okay. You gonna God, the devil gonna send a woman that's gonna bounce off his stomach like a trampoline. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> I'm telling you the truth. They looking at us, you looking at us as you look at it as trash. They looking at it as treasure. They want it. I'm talking, okay. You keep talking about he a good he nothing, this and that. And that lady over there affirming him. And she talking about how great he is and how much she loves him. And I'm going to tell you something, ladies, when you got a good man or you have a man, you have to learn how to be his peace and not his stress. I'm going to get a beating. Yeah, I probably will. LV21, yeah. I'm just telling the truth. You, you up there tripping on her stretch marks. Okay. And the devil will send somebody. Put that back up there. I answer your question, my friend. Put it back up there. The devil will send somebody on assignment that will go to Dollar Tree and buy, buy some Mattel cars. And he'll ride through them stress marks like they're a racetrack. You keep on talking crazy to her. All right. I'm being honest with you. All right. You keep treating them like that. You got a good woman, got a good man. I'm telling you. Y'all think I'm playing. Okay. Y'all act save all you want to. You don't hear I'm, I'm speaking the truth. You keep on talking about she got too big. And, okay. The devil over there talking about, yeah, I like it like that. Mm-hmm. A little bit extra for me. She got junk in the trunk. She dragging that wagon. That's the enemy. That's what he'll do. You talking about, oh, uh, I don't like your weave in your hair. That's all right, boo. The devil will send somebody to play with it. You better appreciate when we are in the friend zone. Is it acceptable to have your male friend pay his own meal? It is acceptable to have him pay his own meal, but it ain't acceptable for him not to pay for yours. Talk, man, because he's trying to woo you. He's trying to get you. And because he's trying to get you, he need, let me tell y'all something. I have never, somebody type the word never, and you can type it as long as you want to. I have never, ever in my life made a woman pay for my meal. Not even on my birthday when they should have paid for it. Never. Some men don't like that. Ain't no going Dutch with me. No. If we're going out with me, I'm going to pay for it. Pray for me, mom, please. N never, ever. When I was a young boy, if I took you out to dinner, if we went out, whatever, I paid for everything. I'm tell you some ladies, all right, uh, uh, who can find a virtuous woman, her price is four above rubies. And, and, and here's the thing. I do not teach women to go, golly, where y'all got me going? I don't teach women to go out there and be gold diggers and you go out there and you get a man to go take you out to the most expensive place and you order a steak that costs $150, but you wouldn't have ordered that anyway if you took yourself out. I don't teach that. See, see, sometimes men will put you in predicaments and they'll see if you're going to kind of respect the boundaries or you're going to be that woman that's going to be frugal because they're looking further. You need to know the difference. They've got some men, they got money, they want to flaunt it, all right? And I know some of y'all done played around with some of them men because you just spent his money because you knew he had it, right? But a man that's really serious about you, you need to show him that you can help him manage his, his estate or his money. Ooh, y'all quiet. Why y'all quiet, ladies? You need to show him. It ain't about that. You're not my come up or my hustle. You're not my 401k plan. You're not my bank draft boot. I don't need a direct deposit. I got it going on myself. But you're showing respect for the relationship that could be. But secondly, I believe as a man, if they take you out, number one, if he take you to that place, he should be able to afford it. Because if you're one of them women that's just going to be greedy and order it, he needs to be able to afford it. But he should not take you to something he can't afford. He needs to be honest and transparent with you out the gate. That say, baby, you know what? This is all I'm working with, and this is what I got. Are y'all hearing this? All right? 
And now you can respect the fact of his honesty. A man that's honest with you out the gate, you got to show him a lot of respect because he's not trying to play games with you. He may have something that he's doing or trying to do or go to a goal or ambition. All right, my meal total is $48. He's honest with you. But you got some of these guys, they sit on the side of their best friend ride. They have no money. They've got their friend's clothes on. They got their homeboy Jordan's on. And they barely can pay for you a, a happy meal at McDonald's. But you think it's cute. But you go back to their place, they have no pictures on the wall. Lying. Facebook. Social media, Snapchat will make you look prosperous. It'll make you look, you can paint any picture on social media that you want to and everybody think you balling out of control and you live in a house with your mother and you're 47 years old. I'm sorry, guys. Y'all got me on this tangent. But if he wants to be with you, especially at a certain juncture in your life, 25, 30, you might have not, you, you might have not made it yet and I get that. But you still get 35, 40. And about 45... And you still struggling. Let me tell y'all something. Let me say it this way. Being poor is expensive. Shout back at your boy. I'm sorry. Being poor is expensive. And if you are poor, it's poor by choice. You, I, I don't have time to be poor. Being poor is expensive. So if he's dating you, if he, he wants to be in your life, then the word reminds you he should come into your life to already be a leader. When I got together <coughs> and got married, I had money saved up. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Saved up. So now when I walk into a life, I'm ready to be a leader. I'm ready to take that place. If all he wants to do is take you out on dates and take you out to get chicken and get pizza, you can buy that by yourself. That's the problem with some of you ladies. They are not ready to lead you. Hey, Bishop. Hey, Dad. They're not ready to lead you. They have nothing that you, listen, you're not being a gold digger, but I promise you, if you are dummying down and acquiescing to who this man is, and you think now because he's cute, ladies, let me bless five of you, cute will never pay your bills. Sex will never pay your bills. Here's a real talk moment, number 3,755. I said so many, I don't know what number I'm at. After the loving comes the living. Can somebody type that? After the loving comes the living. Psh, let me tell you something. You can make love un un until you got static and kinetic energy and you forgot to pay your light bill and it's so much chemistry, the lights come back on, boo. But after you stop, the lights going to get turned back out. It will never pay your bills. It will never put gas in your car. It, it will never take your school, uh, your children's school. It won't pay your mortgage. It won't do nothing. It will not put food in your body, in your body, in, in your stomach. I promise you, you need to understand something. If you are literally getting to the place where you want to just marry somebody for sex, you have lost your mind. Because stats will show you the number one reason for divorce is nothing about sex. It's about money. All right. So you need to be with somebody like Bishop says all the time. I love this. He's, some of you are Ph.D. women and you are dating GED men. My God, put that. We got to put that on the shirt, Bishop. I'm telling you, that's the problem. Some of you have acquired this and you will dummy down and you will acquiesce to a Ph.D. I mean, a GED man has nothing going for himself and you know it. But you are now scared to be single and scared to be alone. Don't you settle for the suitable, the marginality, or the mundane because you are scared to be by yourself. It is better for you to be by yourself, to be with somebody because you have the facade of being with someone and you don't want to be the bridesmaid. You want to be the bride. So you'll have a wedding and a divorce in a year because a lot of you people of God, you love to have a wedding, but you, want, you don't want a marriage. You don't want to put in the work. You put all your work into the reception at a wedding and you put no work into the marriage marriage is not easy people of God take your time but understandably you need to be discerning enough for God to send you the right mate the right man the right woman just because they go to church just because they are spiritual just because they know three scriptures just because they know what to shout at they they have all the steps but they probably don't even have any power just because they the preacher son just because they are a preacher just because they are a deacon just because you walked in church on Sunday and you had on red and he got on red socks and you thought it was God it had nothing to do with God you be so delusional you will talk yourself into something that God himself has not even ordained and now you'll have egg on your face because if your spiritual fathers thank God for mine if your mentors if the people that are covering you and typically are y'all hearing this the majority says no and you go against that Houston we have a problem I'm telling you don't ignore the red flags don't ignore the signs 
I, last point, and this is what we do as men. I've seen it. I've, I've, I've counseled people, hundreds of them. I promise you, just talk to them. They will not listen. A lot of times, ladies, men, no shade, but I just want to say this to you. Men will do whatever it takes to get you back. Well, here's your shout. <laughs> and do whatever it takes to get you. And they will do whatever it takes to supposedly keep you, which means they'll change some of their habits just to get you. Right? And they will marry you, some of them, just to make you shut up. Mm. Okay. And now they'll revert back to the, some of the things that, watch this, that they did when they were with you because they knew you were accepting the capability or the characteristics. Yeah. Characteristics. After they put the ring on. See, if you stay with a man and you dating a man and he cheated on you 10 times, then he know you're going to take him back the 11th time. And he know you marry him. See, some of you trying to prove points to people. You're trying to prove that you're going to be the last one, um, woman standing. The problem with some of you is this. I get so crazy and, and mystified at some of you that post some of this stuff. And you'll say, uh, well, all y'all tried to break us. We all in this together. We in this together. We in this. You trying to break us. And the problem is this. You talking about people trying to break you when this other person in this relationship has already shown you that he's broken you. He's already broke the, the confines of the relationship and you let them get away with it because you don't want to be by yourself. You're trying to prove he's already broken you. You know why? Because he know you're going to come back. So what you'll do, you'll keep on rehearsing Everything that he did to you, but nobody can tell you to walk away from him. And you'll make this your God. And now God will never send you eternity because you keep dealing with somebody that's in your right now. <clears throat> so you'll stay with somebody and literally he wants to send you the man or woman for you for eternity. But you will never get past Mr. Right Down. This one moment, this one flame, this one flame. Because you'll talk yourself into something that God himself Let me tell you something, last point When you get to the place in your life You have to get to the place, seriously I want y'all to hear this When people walk into your life Don't you allow them to push you away From all the people that pulled you through Are y'all hear me? See the enemy comes under false pretenses And he will literally push you away from people that's prayed you through things and poured you through things when you weren't praying yourself, when you were delusional, when you thought you were the snap, crackle, and pop, and the best thing since sliced bread and the coup de gras, and you thought you were the day you moan, and you thought you were the lead opera singer. I promise you, you thought you were Michael Jackson in the Jack Jackson Five. You got so full of yourself that you started your own group. Are you hearing me? And now you'll get to this place where these people are walking to your life and they'll make you think this, and you'll pull away from people that have more discernment than you, that have been through more of these situations than you, and you'll be upset because they all tell you, and you will hear them, but you will ignore it. And then you'll walk down the lane. Friends, real friends, look out at each other, and look out for each other like I do. I need friends that's going to tell me, boy, get yourself together. You're tripping. You need friends, ladies, that don't encourage you to go do it one more time. They need to tell you the truth, but you got to listen. And some of you hard-headed. You don't want to listen. And then, listen, Bishop, we were in Queenology, Bishop, and uh, it was amazing, 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 and amazing. I, I don't even know. I've, I've been talking about Queen. I've been, everybody that called me on the phone, I started talking about Queenology. And they, they ain't trying to hear what I'm trying to say. I'm like, look, y'all need to get to Queenology. It was amazing. And the problem with some of you is this, people, God, Bishop says all the time, you know, <coughs> where the queen understands her value and her network and understands the crown that God has given her and understands really who, are, who she is and her value, you will never, ever settle for a pauper when God has called you to be a queen. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm sorry, but you're not settling for the help when you're the queen, okay? One of the statements we all put out there some time ago, you cannot put a crown on a clown and call him a king. Some of you keep trying to crown. Bozo, homie the clown, you keep trying to clown. All these clowns, crusty the clown, and you're trying to call him a queen, a king. No, no, no. One of the things we have to learn is this. When you talk about a chessboard, the queen is the strongest piece on the board. You need to understand, people of God, the queen that God has made you, brothers. You need to understand the king that he has made you. You won't settle for big thighs and big hips. You'll understand you are a king. All right? One of the last points. I told y'all this before I'm done. My mama would always do this. I'm done. I told this story last week. 
about some of you is this. My mom was a queen. My mom understood how to deal with the king. So my dad would always tell us when we go ask my mama to go somewhere, my mom being the queen of the castle would always say, I love this story. She said, go ask your dad. Watch this. Go ask your dad. My mom would say it at a certain tone, and I didn't tell y'all this part, what my dad would always hear. Go ask your dad. Why? Go ask your dad. He's the king of the castle. Whatever. She didn't say that. We didn't know why. But go to ask your dad. So we would go ask our dad. My dad would turn around and he would say, go ask your mom. Mama told us to ask you. He said, I don't care. Go ask your mom. Here's the shout, people of God. My mother, being the queen that she was, knew how to be the queen of the castle, people of God. Here's the thing. She knew now she could have made the choice without saying one thing to him, and he wouldn't have cared. But she always acquiesced and always gave him, people of God, the honor that was due by now submitting to him and his authority as the king of the house. But the shout is this now. Because of that one subtle thing that she would do is this now. Him being the king of the castle meant, now check this out, he would concede the power back to the queen when you understand that you are a queen i promise you ladies on today that the king could literally be in the castle but he'll give you the keys to the kingdom my mother ran the house you want me to prove it to you the last point is this when a man loves you as a queen and he's a king he'll go pick out a brand new castle house and what he'll do he'll let you get what you want you'll design it like you want You'll get what you want, the furniture, everything, the color. He don't even like pink. He'll let you do it because that's what you want because now you got to know how to treat a king. All he wants is a little room in the back with a TV in it. Baby, can I have a, a little out house? <laughs> because you, ladies, you're queens. And when you understand that, you ain't going to let nobody take your crown. I'm out of time, but I'm not out of work. But did y'all get that point? Favorite point I love to give about queens is this. You got to get that. We just want a little house out there. Just go, can I build me a living room with one TV in it, babe, please? He'll pick it out. Are y'all hearing that? Y'all got to get that. Straight up real, raw, relevant. I got to go, Periscope. I love you guys. I'm going to get on Facebook sometime. Follow me, please, if you're not following me. Last thing. My bishop's on here, so I'm going to say it because I was going to say it anyway. FOCFI conference, July 11th through the 14th is in New Orleans next month. If you are a young preacher, young pastor, if you're an old pastor and you have no covering, you are looking for a fellowship, we need you in New Orleans. Send us information. You go focfi.org and you go and register for the conference. Our bishop will be sharing with us. Hear me clearly. He's going to be sharing with us two or three days in the conference, in the morning sessions with the young pastors and the young preachers. He has a heart to bless us and to help us in ministry. And so we're going to take advantage, full advantage of his wisdom. Are y'all hearing this? So if you have no covering, I, listen, this is something that you need to be a part of. If you are a lady, listen, it is not just men. It is women as well. Oh, y'all missed what I just said. Women, you need a covering. I'm going to say something to you. Don't tell me who you over if you can never tell me who you submitted to. Uh-uh. See, that's what you need to understand. You need to be submitted to somebody. It's July 11th through the 14th. We're submitted to the covering and the honor of Bishop R.C. Blakes. He is our spiritual father. We call him Pops. We call him all kind of stuff. But he loves us and he's going to pour into us. But a lot of times you keep telling us who you over and the, the, the type of congregation you have. Don't tell me who, who you over. Tell me who you under. Okay? And I promise you, it's going to be in New Orleans. All right? R.C. Blakes. Um, as our bishop is going to be at Robert Blake's, I believe, Boulevard. It's going to be at the main location in New Orleans, July the 11th. You can go. You can go and register online. But I'm going to young preachers to come. Young, old. We need to know who you are because this fellowship is going to be rooted and grounded by you guys. It's going to be the foundation. And if you have no covering, you need to come. You need to come explore and you need to let God lead you or where to be, okay? But I'm just putting that out there because I'm on the fellowship and I submit to the authority and the covering of this man of God. I love him to death. He know I love, love him to life, not to death. I love him. And I promise you guys, you're going to be blessed, okay? If you can get to New Orleans, get to New Orleans. We're going to be on social media. And we're going to get on Facebook. We're going to share it on Facebook. We're going to share the flyers. Some of them on my page already. We're going to share, okay? Delaware, I'm coming in October. We're going to the Ladies Night Out in the Word in October. Go to Ladies Night Out, D-E dot eventbrite.com register because we're going to be there i have a men's event and i have a ladies event in delaware i'm putting that out there now it's in october but we want you to register for that event as well if you're not following me on facebook follow me pastor d lewis Demetrius d lewis instagram pastor d l o u i s and if you're not following my bishop follow bishop blaze y'all know better come on now all right 
And you got to follow. Yeah, there are going to be DVDs available at Queen Knowledge of Chosen Mocha. I know that for a fact because they recorded the sessions. You will be blessed. And I promise you, Bishop Blake's making all of us step our game up for conferences because he, he outdid himself. So I'll, he can't go nowhere else but up now. I mean, he this conference was phenomenal. Um, I took videos and pictures and stuff because I told my folks we got we got to make some changes. <laughs> so uh, it was awesome. It was awesome. Best conference I've been to in forever. So, uh, but see, well, I'm gonna say this last point. But you follow the right people and you get covered under the right people because you know the way they do things is a benchmark and it's a platform for how you should do anything, do things. So when you see things in excellence. It makes you deal in excellence as well. Sometimes, I want to say this, no shot, no shade at nobody, but some of the people that you are following have not gone anywhere. They've not done anything. So how can they teach you how to go anywhere and they only have church anniversaries or pastoral anniversaries for the sake of having them? So now they're 20 years old and they want to celebrate the fact that they existed for 20 years, but what real impact did they make? That's something you need to understand. Sometimes the people that you are under, unfortunately, you can't stay with them just because they put a pew in a church or your grandma put a brick on a church or the fellowship hall is named after your great granddaddy. I need you to understand that. You got to get with somebody that's been somewhere and going somewhere because elevation, as they go higher, they take you with them. I just want to put that out there. Hey, Crawford, I need you to come out there to Delaware, okay? Y'all be blessed, Periscope. I love y'all. I tell you, I see y'all later. Y'all follow me if y'all not follow me on Periscope. Y'all have a great day. Thank you, Shante, my friend. If you guys not follow me on Facebook, send me a message. Say, hey, Pastor, it is me. I'm, I'm with you. Follow me. Let me know. I do respond back. I will say this. I don't do a whole lot of relationship advice anymore like that because sometimes you, some of you ladies and some of you gentlemen, I'll tell you something. And you'll go and just use it against me and say something crazy to your spouse and stuff like that. No, 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 no. I'm not doing that. I mean, if you want to talk to me with them, I will do that. But I will not talk to you individually. I'm not doing that. I assure you, I will not do that again. Because sometimes you'll give them good advice. And you'll say, Pastor D said, no, ma'am. Don't put my, no. So, I'm just being honest. Here. I'll talk to y'all soon. Go to www.pastordlewis.com. If you ever want to sow into our ministry, bless us at, at that website, PastorDLewis.com. You can always sow. Be a blessing to our ministry. I love y'all, Periscope. I'm going to roll with you. Speak to them because they're not our denomination, delegation, aggregation. They are, I have nothing to do with them. It's crazy, people of God, that the enemy's laughing at us because we are not on the same team. And so now, when you understand the tricks of the enemy, one of the en things the enemy does... My series at my church is The Devil Comes to Church. The Devil Comes to Church through gossip. He comes to church through people. He comes to church because he wants, understandably, he wants you to say something against the church. There's one word that you can say that can tear a church down. They can tear a pastor down. They can tear the members down. Some of you are amazed because you got to church and you thought everybody was saved. You thought everybody was worshiping God. You had no idea that when you went to dinner with them, they were going to be talking about everybody in the church. You had no idea they were going to be talking about your pastor. You had no idea they were going to be talking about the praise team. It's a crazy thing. They have so much criticism, but if you hand them the mic, they couldn't do the same thing themselves. It's a crazy thing. This is what you deal with when it comes to church. He comes through people. He comes through pastors that have a platform, but they are not manipulative in their approach. And the thing about this is, people of God, um, the thing about the pastors that are manipulating, you thought that because they had a gift, they had the anointing. One of the things that we do as believers of God is we mistake charisma. Hey, my friend. As anointing. Man. Did y'all get that? We mistake charisma as anointing. I can tell you this. I can say enough catchphrases and enough high five your neighbors and I can holler enough and you'll feel something. You'll run around. You'll jump and you'll shout if I say enough words. Because time, sometimes we are so in emotionalism. And because of the emotionalism, we think it's a move of God. A lot of times and some of the tears that we shed in church are emotionalism because of things we've done and we're guilty. I'm going to ask you a simple question. How many of you have been to the place in your life where you went to church and you cried not because the spirit of God was moving. You cried because of what you did wrong. I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait. I will wait. 
That's what we do. And so we think because they have a couple of catchphrases, you know, a couple of this or that, we think it's the spirit of God. That's not how it works. I'm talking about now how to understand to really know your enemy. And the way you know your enemy is this. I got a scripture here, Mark 5 and 6 through 8. I'm going to bless five of you, and I'm going to get over here. This is a series that I'm doing at my church. I was going back through some things on today. Mark 5, 6 to 8. Check this out. It says, when he saw Jesus from a distance, he ran and fell on his knees. He shouted at the top of his voice, what do you want with me, Jesus, son of the most high? The word says, when he saw Jesus from a distance, he ran. Watch this. He ran. He said, what do you want from me, Jesus, son of the most high? Check this out. Here in this particular text, now you see a man that's possessed with the devil, and here it is. You would think that now he would come to Jesus and he would hate Jesus, but he comes to Jesus, watch this people of God, and he addresses him in his deity because in, understandably, you got to know that the devil is monotheistic. He understands there is one true and living God. So when he addresses Jesus, he always has to address him in his deity. He hates Christ, but check this out. He comes up to him and the word says, here it is the man recognized who Jesus was I brought out a critical point I had no notes about this Sunday and God was dealing with me I was speaking hey by the way hey my friend check this out the word says he comes up to Jesus with a loud voice he yells and he screams to Jesus with a loud voice Critically, if you were doing homiletical preaching and expository preaching 101, that should stand out as a sore thumb if you're trying to address the audience, preachers, teachers, everybody. When you are in front of people, you need to know your audience and how to reach your audience. Sometimes the things that you say about Job with six old loans, flesh fell from his bones, boo, that was 1975. You got to wake up. It got to be relevant to now the times. It's simple. It just spoke to you. You should have brought a point out about this. It says when he saw Jesus, he came to him in a loud voice. One of the critical points that you can bring out of this text, because it's speaking to you right now, that when the enemy comes, the enemy does not come quiet. There it is. Ooh, there it is. See, when the enemy comes at your life, he doesn't come quiet. He doesn't come silent. He makes noise. He wants everybody to know his presence. He wants everybody to know he's there. He wants everybody to know he's trying to wreck your life. You want me to prove it to you? When, uh, when things go awry in your life, the enemy is not quiet. He wants to destroy you. His sole objective and his purpose is to kill, steal, and destroy. He comes with a loud voice and he yells, people of God. He says, what do you want with me, Jesus? Now, to make it relevant to 2017, he comes with a loud voice. And now you can now uh, put it in the posture when it comes to people. When the enemy comes through people, they come loud. They make a lot of noise. They make a lot of noise about your life. They don't come quietly. They don't come silently. They come, all right? They come loud. You've ever had people that walk into your life and they came and they made an interest and they made an arrival and they made it known that they were there. They were trying to be there. They were going to make sure that you knew they were there. He worships you so much, but you never talk about God. But all you talk about is your body, my friend. He worships you so much. And all he talk about how cute you are and how pretty your lips and your hips and your fingertips. He worships you. Are you hearing me? But he never has a relationship with God. Then he does not respect the God in you. He has made you out to be his God. And what he'll do is take on the Messiah complex one more time and he'll want you to now worship him because he'll take on the spirit of the adversary because now he does not want you to worship God. Y'all better hear me, ladies, on today. Men that come into your life, same thing, women, all right? And, uh, women, okay? Women, men that come into your life, men, women that come into your life and they worship you but they don't love God. Houston, we have a problem. Are y'all hearing me today? You got a problem that he'll talk you out of going to church on Sunday and you had a relationship with God. You, you, you have a problem that he'll talk you out of going to midweek teaching and he'll talk you out of getting on the conference call for the prayer line that you used to do every day. He, he, you have a problem where he'll talk you out of listening to the word on Periscope and social media. You, uh, you have a problem when all he wants to do is go clubbing with you and partying with you and meet you back at the house and y'all drink and y'all get toe up to the flow up. No, people of God, you, that's a problem. When they will worship you to that avail and they'll put you on that pedestal, but they have no relationship with God. So you will now think he loves you so much and you will lose your identity and your relationship with God because of the worship he gives you. You are convoluted in your spirit. Okay, you are sad. I promise you. 
Don't you ever allow anybody to come into your life and now you'll put God on the back burner. See, this is what God does in our life and we don't like it sometimes. The reason God does not give some of you relationships and give you the man you want, the house you want, or give you some of these things that you desire and you want to acquire is because of this. He knows that if he gives it to you, you'll lose your relationship and your identity to him. And so what you'll start to do, you'll start to put God on a one night stand basis. Wow. And what you'll do, you'll start to be to the place in your life where you'll only serve God and you'll only call on him when you need him. So what you'll do, you'll go and you'll look all beautiful for this man, but you won't even adorn yourself with the beauty of holiness. Talk, Pastor D. Well, somebody play the organ. I'm ready to preach now. Did y'all hear that? Come on now. That's just the truth. And I'm telling you, I see your eyes, yeah. <laughs> and that's what we do. And so it's possible. And we in A flag, we're ready to preach now. Are y'all hearing this? It's possible. OK, because now watch this, guys. You need to understand that what happens is this. Here it is. We are at the place where now people are worshiping science and they are worshiping materialism and they are worshiping money and everything under the sun. You worship your new car and God bless you with it. But you worship. Oh, you got to clean it and watch it on Sunday. You worship more, more of you on here and, and everybody across this country. You worship your bed. You want to sleep. It's amazing you only get tired when it's time to go to church. Oh, that is the trick of the devil. I'm telling you, people of God, don't be fooled by the enemy. Don't fall prey to the enemy. You'll show up at everything you want to show up at. You'll put your money into $200, $300 bundles. Yes, you will, but you won't even tie it on Sunday. Can't nobody get you to put $25 in church and you have a fit if the preacher asks for it, but you will put your money on everything that you want to do because you are worshiping what you want to worship. Let me tell you something. At the end of the day, you, you need to understand every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess who Jesus is, guys. And we got to get that. Sometimes you think now this preaching is out of, out of style and some of the stuff I say is real relevant. It is very profound. But sometimes we got to get back to remind you that you got to worship God and you got to love God and you cannot put God on weekend visitations. You got to serve him every day. Sometimes you don't crack your Bible open until you get to church and a preacher call out a scripture. Those are tricks of the enemy. OK, you got to know the word of from for yourself. You can't keep walking around and talking about it is written. It's somewhere in the Bible. No, you need to know the word for yourself. I, I've done insurance and in insurance, when I would get calls on the phone, I never had time to go look up the policies because I needed to know it by heart. So when they asked me, was it payable or was it excluded or was it covered? I could immediately answer the question because I had already memorized and studied the policy. The word have you hid in your heart, David said, so you cannot sin against him. But the problem is this. You are not creating enough vacancy for God to inhabit you. You are now convoluted with a lot of other things, but we are not vacant enough for God to come into our heart. Right? <coughs> Don't be so busy. I love y'all. Don't be so busy. Were well, you trying to pursue a man and chase a man, but you don't ever pursue and chase after God's heart, right? Don't be so busy where well, you want a, a, a pretty woman, but you never go out and you pursue God. Don't be so busy where well, you want your business to be so flourishing, but you never flourish in the word of God. I'm saying it on today, people of God, you got to be at this place because the devil, people of God, here it is now, wants you to worship him. Okay, so he comes to Christ. He runs fast. He makes a loud noise. He worships Jesus Christ, but he doesn't love him. Ask yourself a critical question today. Are they worshiping me? Or Let's go. How's everybody? It's Tuesday. Oh, man, come talk to me. I gotta go in a second. How's everybody doing? You guys are having a blessed day, wonderful day. On today, our people of God, it's good to see you. Come on into the room. Fight some people. Not going to be long. Hope you guys are having a beautiful day. Hey, guys, as you're coming. Hey, hey, Bishop Allen, how you doing? Uh, I I hope you guys are having a great day. Listen, uh, I'm going to be in Delaware. I'm saying this early um, for three, four days, and we're going to do a ladies' night out in Delaware. So you got to go to Eventbrite. If you're in the Philly area, New York area, um, all those areas, Delaware, I'm going to be in your area. you got to go to um, ladiesnightoutde.eventbrite.com. So www.ladiesnightout, ladiesnight, I'm sorry, 
um, ladies night out de dot eventbrite dot com. Hello, my friend. It's hey, Mr. G G. Ladies night out. L a d i e s night out. D e as in Delaware. Dot eventbrite dot com. Register. Gonna be glad you did. Um, anybody on here from the Philly area, Philly, New York? Uh, you gotta get your t-shirts and your bags and stuff so you can be looking all cute and stuff for the event. Um, Philly, New York, Delaware, anybody from those areas, do me a favor, type of one, if you are from those areas. The rest of y'all hit that share button. Let's get it on and popping. But I want you to register. If you hadn't followed me, follow me now and all that good stuff. If you're from Philly, anybody from Philly, De Philly, Delaware, type of one, if you are, I want to say hi. Just let you know I'm going to be in your area, so I want you guys to register. South Jersey, South Jersey, thank you. Help me now. Help me, Dr. Dana. South Jersey. I think the area is within an hour, two hour radius of everybody. So plenty of people should be able to come. But I want you guys to go register at Eventbrite for our ladies' night out. Philly. Well, Miss Beauty, I need you to come. I'm going to be in your area now. Register and get your little cute t-shirt and all that stuff. Delaware Valley area. Dr. Dana, Delaware Valley is what she said. She said it. Virginia, wherever y'all at, I need y'all to register and show up. You're going to have a ladies' night out with me. Pastor D, you're going to be glad you came. I'm going to have something splendiferous for you. Go look it up, I guess is a word. New York, yes, New York. In that area, ladies' night out, D-E, Delaware, dot eventbrite.com. I'm Pastor D, Senior Pastor Unity Worship Center. Thank you guys. I've been all over the place. I'm tired, but we're moving on next month. We're going to be uh, at the FOCFI Convocation in New Orleans, Louisiana. I will preach the closing night. Um, I will preach the closing night of the convocation. So I want you guys to come if you are in the, in, in the New Orleans area. Um, I'll preach that closing night of the convocation on next month. So come and see me, brother from another mother. I will be there in New Orleans, Louisiana, with Bishop R.C. Blakes. Um, Delaware Valley Remind me Dr. Dana to say that So I want you guys to come Everybody else Need you to register at Eventbrite If you're ready Type ready You gotta get it out there Greetings my friend Listen um, I got something <coughs> Real quick And I want to talk about this quickly uh, New Orleans Yeah come see me in New Orleans You're gonna be glad you did I gotta speak Be the keynote speaker that night it's going to be blessed. I'm going to have something up my sleeve, so just come come hear me. I promise you'll be glad you did. Uh, one of the things I'm talking about quickly on today, succinctly, is that you need to know who your enemy is. Some of you are fighting the wrong enemy. Churches in general, people in general, Christians in general, one of the biggest things that we do, we fight each other. We should be on the same team, and we're not really fighting the enemy. We should be against the enemy. It's crazy that the enemy, watch this, people, that demons and devils, don't separate they have one mission and one goal and they stay together but it's always the church that always separates let me say it this way church kills its wounded but one of the things i always say is this it's a shame it's a shame there's more loyalty in the streets than in the house of god crazy right they'll go out and shoot somebody in the street somebody will bear witness to it and they see it and they'll go to court and they won't even testify Hey, Mr. Streets, isn't that crazy? They'll go to court, and they won't even talk and sell on each other. But you get in church, and church celebrates its wounded. Church celebrates when somebody downfalls. Church people, and, and I'm saying that under the mantra, I'm not Christians, but real church folks. They just, when somebody, you know, has an issue, we talk about each other. Yeah, gossip about each other. We do every bit of this. It's a shame. And the enemy is laughing at us because we have philosophical differences when it comes to the word of God. Uh, we have antiquated differences as well because some of the differences are more religious than it is biblical. All right. And some of these things that we teach and some of the things that we do in our churches are just religion, has nothing to do with God. And we are fighting each other. We won't speak to that church across the street. We won't say them. They were going to make sure that when you went to certain places that you knew they were with you. They were trying to announce an arrival. They were loud. You are around some people because a lot of times you need to understand this is how the devil is. You ever been to a basketball game? It's amazing. Watch this, people of God, that the people in the cheapest seats make the loudest noise. What? Yeah. The devil is sitting in the cheapest seats. 
But he makes the loudest noise. Why? Because that's his job, people of God. The people on court side and front row seats, here's the shout. You ought to see them saying anything because they're used to being there. But the devil now has tried to occupy space that he really can't inhabit. And that's why he comes to try to announce his rival. He says, check this out. What do you want with me, Jesus? What do you want? And now he says, what do you want? Because he understands that now every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess. He knows who Jesus is. Secondly, check this out. And I wrote a point down. Is this. Okay? So he recognizes who Jesus is. He comes with a loud voice. Number two. All right? Thirdly, check this out. The devil knows that his days are numbered. I was reading the Revelation 12 and 12 on Sunday. And I was telling people the devil understands that his days are numbered. That's why he comes at you so fast and tries to wreak havoc and wreak havoc on your life. Because his days are numbered. See, when the devil reminds you of your past, you always remind him of his future. Is that good, Periscope? When the devil reminds you of what he's doing, always remind him of where he is and where he's going. He will never go to anywhere but hell, people of God. So he works as fast as he can to come against you and try to come and wreak havoc against your life. He tries to stop you. He tries to thwart your destiny. Comes against your children. Come against your family. Come against, and that's what he wants to do because that's his job. If we would get back on our job, my people, which I call by my name, if we would really get back to praying. I told my people on Sunday, the thing about prayer warriors, the thing about people that are intercessors is this now. They don't just start praying when things go awry in their life. They stay in a posture of prayer because they know it's a calm before the storm. See, if everything is quiet in your life right now, then you can expect something to happen. So now, you don't just start praying when things happen. You already got a prayer just in case something happened. Prayer should be like a camel's, uh, 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 the humpback of a camel. And now, a humpback of a camel does this. It's a reservoir of water. So when it goes in a dry place and there is no water, it can pour from the storage from within and pour water even if there's nothing to drink. When you understand what prayer is in your life, you have something stored up for a dry, rainy season. Okay? Well, dry season, not rainy. A dry season in your life where well, you got a prayer for that. You got a praise stored up for that. You got something on the inside of you stored up for that. So when stuff goes wrong in your life, you're expecting it because you're already in the mode of prayer. And too many Christians and anemic Christians and cookie cutter Christians, they don't start praying to stuff go wrong. Are y'all catching me today? And now when things go wrong, you start to pray. God, jump through hoops to fix this. God, go through hoops to do this. God, go do this. Go do that. Go do that. And God said, you should have been praying. And if you were discerning enough, you would expect it to come. And when I send it to you, you need to understand, I will never put more on you than you can bear. So you would see, if you got a prayer for that, I know a lot of people are guilty of that. If you have a prayer already stored up on the inside and a praise on the inside, see, people that are consistent believers... And consistent Christians and prayers You can't tell when they're going through Are y'all catching me today? Please tell me y'all You don't know when they're going through Because they look the same Every time you see them You don't know if they're sick You don't know if they're going through something at home You don't know if they're broke You don't know if they lost a job They are the same every time they don't wear their feelings on their face or on their sleeve. They're not coming with attitudes and arrogance and, and frustrated because they people of God, are y'all hearing this? They are now those uh, consistent praisers and those consistent. But see, when you understand the attacks of the devil, watch this. Nothing frustrates the devil more than a wounded worshiper. Y'all throw your wig, go get it. Somebody should have shouted right there. I, I know y'all trying to be quiet today because y'all real cute and all this stuff. But let me talk to the real people real quick and I got to roll. Nothing frustrates the devil more than a wounded worshiper. Are y'all catching me? A wounded worshiper. When you wound it, but you still praise God. Will you frustrate it, but you still praise God. Will you feel like going back to the BCU and cussing everybody out, they mama, lottie, daddy, and everybody, but you hold your peace and let God come on. Periscope and let God fight your back. A wounded worshiper. When they leave you, neglect you, they walk out of your life, leave you nothing. I'm, I'm talking about you on the bare minimums. You're trying to scrape pennies together to take care of your family and your children. Nothing frustrates the enemy. When you are wounded, he's thrown everything at you and you still here. Oh, come on, y'all. He throws everything at you and you refuse to give up. Are y'all catching me today? He throws everything at you and you refuse to go throw in a towel. 
You refuse to go settle back for what used to happen. You refuse, good evening, my friend, to go back and ask anybody for money because you refuse to go sell yourself short. Are y'all catching this, Dom? All right? You have to understand. You are wounded worshipers on here today. And that's what you understand. When you are now in touch with your imperfection and in your feelings, people of God, and you are in touch with who you are, what you'll understand is that you always need God. So the enemy, number two, he understands that his days are numbered. When the devil knows that his days are numbered, his job is to try to take you out as soon as he can. And you sit up here crying and saying, Lord, I, I, I don't know what to do. And Lord, I can't figure it out. And the devil's laughing at you because you got God on your side. Here go your shout for the day. The devil has some power, but he does not have all power. Come on, Periscope. I wish I would get that in your spirit. He has some power, but he doesn't have all the power. Here it is, people of God. You got to understand. Watch this, guys. Here go to shout. When you understand the word of God, it'll tell you that there are some demons that are already chained up waiting to be judged. And there are some devils, people of God, maybe here, 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 let me say it this way. I told my church this Sunday, I don't know if they was catching it. I think they were being cute, but they finally got it at the end. There are some devils that are already chained up that are ready to be judged. Watch this. Maybe if you really look at this, what I just said, you ever wonder why some of the things that hit some of your family never hit you? Hmm. Maybe. And I'm saying this in rhetoric because I, I, I know the answer. It's not really a maybe, but I'm just saying. You ever thought about this, though? Just maybe. Um, God had already chained up some of the devils to your past to generational curses. You ever wonder why some of the curses skip your bloodline and some of the sickness skip your bloodline and some of the generational curses skip your children and some of the things that your parents and your grandparents suffer from you have not suffered from nor will you suffer from because God will get to a point in your life where he will take what the enemy does to you personal somebody type that in the comments says personal I'm here today prophetically to say to a hundred of you that's paying attention what you're going through God is taking it personal he has your name on his lips he has your name on his heart he has taken this personal. That's why some things that killed your uncle and your auntie and your father will now kill you because he's chained up the devil that's trying to bind you up. God's removing the handcuffs to your past and he's now releasing you to your future. And what he will do, he will literally throw the keys away to your past and understandably walk you to a bright future. That's the problem with some of you on today. You need to understand that all the power belongs to God. It does not belong to him. The devil cannot do anything unless God allows it. Are y'all catching this today? And so now what happens is this now. Here's the shout of the text now. The devil runs up. Watch this, guys. He runs up, okay, to Jesus. He run, The word says the first thing that he does is worship. I just want to do this one point today because it's my favorite point. He worships Jesus. The devil, y'all catching this. The devil runs up. And the first thing he does is worships Jesus. Here go your shout, people of God. All right? If you were relevant to 2017, you can make this out to be relationships now. Preachers, I'm just helping you, homolytical 101. And I will tell you that the devil does not like Jesus, does not love Jesus. But the word said, watch this, guys. He walks up to Jesus and he gets on his knees and he worships and he bows to Jesus. Here's your shout of the day. It is possible to worship someone without loving them. I got to go, Periscope, because y'all just missed that. It went over your head. I'm going to say it one more time. It is possible. Are y'all hearing that? It's possible to worship somebody and not love them. Wow. I'm done. I just want to do that one point. I set y'all up for the okie dokie. Preachers, you can have it for free. Just give me a credit. You know, just cite me when you go. I'm going to say it again. You ever been in a relationship and this boy was so stupid and crazy for you, but they may have really worshipped you, but they really didn't love you. 
Sometimes they worship the stuff that you do for them and the stuff that you can do for them. See, the thing about it, people of God, is this. Sometimes now, people will come under false pretenses because they know what you can do for them. So they'll worship the things that you can do, but they really don't love you. Y'all quiet, but I'm telling the truth now. So he now worships him without loving him because the demons worship Jesus. Watch this, y'all. Not because they loved him. They worship him because of who he is. They know he is God and they know his authority. Some people come around you because they know the authority and the power that you have so they'll worship you because they're trying to get to the source of your strength man 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 yeah it's more of revelation but it's more of just simple context clues are you hearing me he worships him but he doesn't love him and I'm going to tell y'all something. We're living in a time where people will worship you. Watch this, ladies. And they will worship you, but they don't love God. Anytime a man walks into your life and he worships you, but he does not love God, and he worships you so much, but he won't go to church with you. Oh, y'all quiet. Come on. Stay with me. He worships you so much, but he doesn't even read the word with you. He worships you so much, but watch this. He doesn't pray with you.